Take a look at how to configure a virtual machine to have multiple network interfaces within Azure. Now, to begin, I want to point out that I have a standard DSH v3 uh, virtual machine. That's important because not all virtual machine sizes are created equal when it comes to the number of network interfaces they can support. Uh, a quick look at the documentation for a DV3 series will tell you that if I want four NICs, I need a D8 minimum. Uh, with a D4 or D2, I only get two NICs, and if I want eight, I'm up to a D16, 32, or 64. And again, this will vary for all the different VM SKU sizes. Um, you just need to be aware of this and make sure that if you need more than one NIC, especially if you're getting into needing multiple NICs, three, uh, you know, four, eight, whatever the case might be, that you've got a virtual machine that is of the correct size to support that. I've already created uh, the network interface I'm going to use. That was the subject of another demonstration. So here's the network interface, uh, and I've creatively called it Nunic. Let's let this uh, resource group load up here. Or sorry, new int. So here's my network interface that we're going to add. Uh, it's got a public IP assigned to it. It's already associated with a subnet. It's got a network security group associated with it. Uh, so all the network interface work has been done. Now to add this to a virtual machine, the first thing is that the virtual machine has to be deallocated. Uh, so we can't make these changes with the virtual machine running. So this virtual machine is stopped. We're going to go to the networking area and then simply click attach network interface. It's going to show us the available interfaces we have to add. I'm not sure why that one's turning up twice. Click OK, and it will attach that as a second NIC. Uh, now that process does not take a terribly long time. Uh, once it's done, we'll have a tab available for the second network interface of the VM. There we go. So click on it, and it shows the contents of the affiliated network security group, uh, the associated IP, and then what the public IP configuration is, not necessarily the actual public IP. Go back to my overview, and we'll go ahead and actually start this virtual machine. Now, while that's starting in the background, remember that even though I've associated uh, multiple uh, NICs with this machine, only one NIC, the first NIC, is considered the primary NIC. Um, that's important because that's the only one that's going to receive a gateway address. So if you need to configure routing for that second interface, especially if it's connected to a different subnet or, or whatever the case might be, um, you've got to use internal routing rules. Uh, so within Windows, your, your classic route print command or, or something similar to that. I, I don't know offhand what the equivalent Linux command is. Um, but you would need to configure in operating system routing rules um, and routing tables to use that second interface for something explicit. Uh, it's gonna get no default gateway. The default gateway only lands on the primary interface. So that virtual machine is started. I will attempt to connect to it. It may or may not be ready for RDP just yet. We'll see. Doesn't look like it is, so we'll just give this thing another couple of minutes and then uh, complete the RDP connection. And so now we're ready. Go ahead and log on to this and just take a look at the network configuration. And to do that, I'm just going to open a simple command prompt. And run the classic ipconfig command. I will just make that font a little bigger. And so you can see here that we now have two interfaces and both those interfaces are connected to the same subnet, but only the first interface, the primary interface, has that default gateway associated with it. Um, so we now have a multi-homed virtual machine within Azure. We could have, for example, a front-end, back-end subnet uh, with each NIC attached to a different subnet. In this, this particular example, we're just focused on, you know, how do we go about adding that second NIC? Uh, so we just plug them into the same subnet. Um, to remove that NIC, it's the reverse process. I just need to stop the virtual machine first. Uh, once that virtual machine is stopped, I can come into the networking section and I can detach 
that virtual machine. Now this is going to fail because the virtual machine is still running. But if I just wait a couple of minutes, retry that, I can detach uh, that second network interface. And now we're back to a single NIC VM.